Hey, I'm Thursday welcome to Skype Hacks. Today we will continue our journey uh, learning bash programming and uh, on the agenda today is reading user input and leaping through data in various ways. So let's get started. Um, so the first thing that we want to do in most shell programs is to read some in input uh, very often from users. So let's do that. In its most simple form, uh, you access the first argument with dollar one, the second with dollar two, and so on. So we can uh, do that. So I, I I have a program foo, and I would like it to say, uh, "Hello, John, your age is 32." Um, so then I could do, "Hello, John, your age is two, like that." So if I now run it, it will output like this. Very good. If you were to post code like this here on the left hand side uh, on Stack Overflow, there will definitely be a guy within five minutes that will tell you you shouldn't use echo, you should use printf. So let's do that. Um, one and two and then hello your HS. Okay. And then Um, let's say I'll remove the first one or else it's too, too confusing. Um, yeah, it's important that you need the same number of variables that are passing into the format of the string, um, uh, the same number of this percentage s you need as variables. If they don't match, then you get confusing results. So there we go. Now we have the same output as before, but now written with printf which is considered more secure, uh, escaping wise, and more portable. So you get extra brownie points for using printf. Um, you might also get a, a couple of fewer bugs during a year if you use printf. So highly recommended using that. Um, all right, so we've written the hello world command now. Um, there's also something else to say about reading the user but you can loop through them. So if you're if you're getting a lot of, say, only usernames and you want to create all the, you know, lots of Unix users and you want to pass in, you know, 100,000 usernames and then you want to, for each username, you want to create that user. Then you would do for user and then you have a special one called dollar at do and then you can do you know add user user something like that. So now if, if you run it with Lisa join um you get one per per line. Very good. So that will you know uh, serve you well in a lot of use cases and many people go through their entire careers only writing user input handling like this. Um, in a future episode I'll go through using getopt to do uh, you know more more advanced user input handling that you can get like dash dash name and then you have a name variable and you have a dash dash h and then you have the h value and you can then then the order doesn't matter anymore because you have these named parameters but that's for another day. Uh, this here is more than good enough to get started with. Now, that was passing parameters to your command, but now let's pass parameters on to functions. So I prefer to organize my code in functions because it's easier to test, it's easier to reuse code, and your simple command always starts out very, very simple, just five lines of code. But then very soon it starts to grow and then eventually, you know, it's a hundred lines of code and you wish you had it as functions. So I just always start using functions. So then my uh, git log is not confused with white space diffs because, oh, all of a sudden all this, this, uh, this shell code is now in a function. So I prefer to call my main method main. It doesn't have to be main like in C in Java, but for consistency, I just call it main. And the way you pass um, pass a parameter is is like this. And then it, you pass on all the parameters, and 
this should I put this in and it did that was good um, let's say to make this visible the importance of passing the the at here and um, you can say so so this is what we have seen a couple of times but now if you instead did an asterisk uh, it's all sent as one string so then it will only output one user which has the name Lisa John Arna which is not what we want but sometimes you want it so it's important it's good to be aware of the difference um, so that's what I talked about here uh, so when you pass things on using this annotation here then you can be sure that the first and second parameter that was passed to your command is also passed as the first and second to the function and so here I'm creating some local variables and I'm putting them uh, the values into these variables and then compare that to the asterisk annotation which flattens the the array, if you will, and since it's all as one string. Now, uh, let's turn to looping. Looping is also very, very fundamental and very, very useful. So, the for ln annotation, uh, that's what I definitely use the most. So, this is what I've used here um, for looping. You could also do, let's say, um, it's very simple. So, instead of having a variable, you can also say, you know, one, two, three. Um, let's see. That was wrong. What did I do wrong? I did something wrong. Um, unexpected token, yeah. So you do need a do. You do need a do. There you go. Um, and this didn't do anything because I didn't. Um, I didn't call it. So the main method is not something magic, it's just something I called it. Uh, so you need to call it at the root of your command for in order to execute. Now you, I get one, two, three. Um, another uh, for loop construct which is good to know about is that you can do for n if you know if you want to do something a hundred times, say you want to you you are creating a performance test. And you want to execute something a thousand times, you can do this. You know, I can do curl you know, example.com API. Um, uh, yeah, what's the matter? Eh? Yeah, it's unused. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Um, so now it executes this a thousand times. Um, of course, you can make use of the eye as well. You know, if you have like a person thing, you can do that. So now you have a very easy performance testing framework. Of course, nothing as fa fancy as Siege or some other tool, but you know, you can get this is very versatile and you can use it for whatever you want. I'm sure that you already are starting to get ideas on what to use it for, right? Okay, so that's uh, two kinds of loops. Um, another loop that I really like is the uh, the while loop, and then especially in in uh, in combination with other commands that are reading a lot of user input. So here I have the example that I'm finding a lot of files, and then I'm reading all those files and doing something with them. Um, <clears throat> I'll use a slightly different example. So. There is a file on every Linux distribution called slash etc um, OS release and the output of that is information about the operating system on which this computer is running. And as you can see it's got root Linux and it's based on Arch and so on and so forth. Great distribution by the way. <laughs> so let's say that I want to loop through each of the lines in this file and I want to act on the keys and the values uh, that are on, on every line. So then I would do while read line do you know line and I can say line equals like that. Uh, 
And then I run it, you can see that I get one entry per line and it says line equals. So yeah, I'm in control of the actual data. I'm not just cutting the file, you can see I'm looping through it and interacting with the data. So now what I would like is to have the case in one variable called key in the value now in the value in a value variable. So let's do that. And then one of my favorite tricks in Bash is that you set the IFS uh, variable, which is a special sorry, uh, variable that, that controls uh, how the white space that affects how it loops. So the for ln loop, you know, it acts on, you know, by default, say, uh, a space. So you can iterate through each word in a sentence. That's a default behavior. But if you set the IFS to, in this case, we set it to the equal sign. Uh, it allows us to iterate on the key and the value. And then I want to do um, key value value and I use a here string. And now I can do key equals that and I can say value equals the other one. There. So we'll go through this again. I'll just show you how it works. Now you can see I have key equals name and values got rid of the next and so on and so forth. And I'm doing that for each line. And then I am contesting, you know, if key equals this, then I can do that with the value and so on. Um, so what's going on here? So I'm setting this separation character, which affects splitting. And then I'm using uh, rate and I say, uh, Basically, yeah, the dash r, I haven't mentioned that before. Always, I would just say, always use it. Uh, it allows you to uh, have spaces in file names. I, I don't like white space in file names, but if you are an assistant that has it, you know, you, you need this. And just to be safe, rather safe than sorry, just always include it. All right, so read r and then key value, and then you have the here string, and then line. So it reads, feeds the line in here and it splits it on the equal sign and puts the values in key value. And if there had been, you know, a third um, third value after, you know, another equal sign, you could have put that into the rest, rest variable. Or ignore value. Okay, there. And that's... Uh, that will solve yet yet more use cases for you. Um, very, very powerful construct, both the wild read line and the splitting using the IFS character. And the good thing about doing this on one line, this line here, is that if you set it here, uh, it will also affect you know another while loop down here. And so if you wonder, oh, why doesn't this you know split like normal? Uh, it's because this one up here has already been set. And then, you know, you could also start to do all the, you know, set this thing here, and then you set it, and then you act on it, and then you reset it to to what it used to be. But most of the time, you just want it on one operation. So I I recommend to do use this construct whenever you can. Very useful. Yes. Um, another comment that you will get on Stack Overflow is if you use cat in this way, some people will say, well, that's not efficient. You should rather do, and uh, this is also what my editor said, tells me, you should rather do something else. So, I mean, in order to earn, earn more brownie points, you can do this. And now you don't have that pipe. So it's more efficient. Um, I find this less readable, but people are different. Um, the result is the same. And if it's uh, you know a huge data set, you know this may may actually make a difference. It's definitely worth checking out. Um, for readability, I like this one better. Sorry, and it also makes it easier to you know you can do. Do things 
uh, and it's you know easier to plug in more operations and you know clearly see what's going on. But yeah, there you are. So that was reading without the cat. So again, uh, you have this redirect character or um, where you can read from a file like that into the while loop. Then that loops until the end of the file. So that was everything I want to show you today. So we've gone through reading user input using $1, and so on, as well as looping through the at array or $asterix variable. Um, and when you loop with while, while read, always include a R that allows you to handle file names with spaces in, in them and um, learn to manipulate the IFS variable. It's very, very powerful and you can use it for many things. Um, there's a good man page, I will say this every time, there's a good man page on man. Um, it has many things that I don't know. Uh, but I find it useful to, you know, I constantly go back to it and read some details and has information about Bash, about the built-ins and all the small um, subtle differences uh, in Bash. Um, in a future episode, we will go through using GitOps to get more advanced uh, user input parsing so you can have like dash dash name and then the name value and so on. But uh, for now, this is more than enough to get started and many people just use this simple uh, addressing of $1, $2 and so on for the parameters. So um, that's good enough for now. Uh, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.